This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Although Excel is designed as a number crunching machine, it does have quite high and extensive formatting capabilities. We're now going to explore some of those formatting capabilities in looking at how it can format the font using the typeface, the size, the font color, and the odd font decoration. We'll start with the basic accounts unformatted Excel spreadsheet, which is in the working folder. And you can see that that's fairly plain, black text, white background. Now, if we want to make any changes to the typeface, the font color, the size, etc., they're all in this section of the home ribbon, the font group. The first stage to making any changes is to highlight those cells or cell that you wish to make changes to. So firstly, let's highlight the whole sheet. So that's that little blob there between the A and the one that highlights the whole sheet. I can then make a change to the font, the typeface. Instead of Calibri, I would like to use one A other and you can see the list is alphabetical and each typeface is displayed in its typeface. So you can make a decision a lot easier. If you know what you're after, you can start typing for that item and it will appear. So I'm after Verdana and there it is. Still with the whole sheet selected, I'd also like to change the font size. Now I can either do that by clicking in the drop down and choosing a font. And at the minute it's 11 points. Or I can use the go larger, go smaller icons. So that will go up one step at a time. That one will come down one step at a time. So I was at 11, I'm now at 10 and that looks a bit more presentable. If I would then like to make further changes to different cells, then I only need to select those cells. So if I select cell A1, which is our heading cell, and I can push the size up using A. Let's take it all the way to 24 points. The Q headings, I might want to increase those slightly so I can multiple select these cells, clicking on the first one and then control click in the others as we've seen earlier, and push that up also to 14 points. And then each of the months, let's push that up to 12. So we have our headings much bigger than the rest of the page. So to change the font size, the typeface, select those cells you wish to change, typeface is here, font size is here, or quick up and down are here and here. Now you may wish to change the color of certain cells, the color of the text in certain cells. Let's do that with the heading. We select the cell that the heading appears in. This is our color button. It has a drop down arrow and you can pick colors from the list here. And you can see that as you're moving the mouse, the colors change behind. So that saves you clicking, choosing OK, coming back, clicking, choosing OK, as you had to do in the old days. This is now live formatting and you can move across, up and down till you find one that you like. I quite like that purple there. And then that change takes effect. I may wish to do the same with my cues. Click the drop down, and I think I'd like to go red. Now, what you will notice is that when you make a font color change, the A here retains that color for quicker formatting of the next cell. So if I want to take January to December and make those red as well, I just click on the A and they go red. It remembers that that was the last font color that I used. Now, as well as typeface, size, and color, I can add small formatting enhancements. Those small enhancements are bold, italic, and underline. So I need to again, select the cells I wish to affect. So that's that one, that one, that one, and that one. So that's using the control click. B makes them go bold, so fatter. B makes it come off. I makes it go italic, so slightly leaning. I turns it off. U makes it go underlined, U turns it off. You'd also find that underline has another option in there, double underline or single underline. Now each of these can be on all three of them or two of them or one of them. And each of these icons can be activated through keyboard shortcuts. So you'll find control B is bold on or off. U is on or off and control I is on or off. So if it's already on, Control I turns it off. If it's off, Control I turns italic back on. So they're quite easy, straightforward keyboard shortcuts because they're the same letter as the enhancement that takes place. So all three are off. Let's go bold and underline. 
Now you can also access all these font settings by going into the font dialog box, which is accessed through this little icon here to the bottom right of the font group. And you can see in here, there's where you change the typeface, style, so that's italic, bold or bold and italic. Underline has its own drop list. Color has its own drop list. Size is changed in here. The only difference between this and the ribbon is that every change needs to be followed by an OK so you can see if it works. Whereas on the ribbon, you can just try it out and keep trying and experimenting very, very quickly. Now you get two extra options here that aren't available on the ribbon. And that one is strike through. And you can see in the preview that just puts a line through your text for demonstrating that perhaps something is wrong or crossed out. And then superscript or subscript. Now you can't have both on at once. It's one or the other. But no point in actually doing that on a single cell because the whole contents of the cell will either go above or below the normal line. Superscript and subscript work well with parts of text. And we'll see that in action in a future lesson. So that's OK here. We haven't actually changed anything, so nothing takes effect. But again, it's highlight the cells you're interested in. So I could highlight those three and go italic. I could highlight all those and go italic. It's the highlighting that's important before you choose anything here, because only the cells that are highlighted will get changed.